you understand that if we continue to lose all institutions in America to the commies, to the left, to the Democrat socialists, etc., uh, we're not going to be able to win elections. We're not even going to have the country that we thought we did left. It will be transformed into something else. Those are the stakes here. And understand that in recent decades, conservatives have woken up to the fact that the left does not want a neutral ground, a level playing field. They want control and power. And to that end, they have seized the commanding heights of academia, Hollywood, journalism. All of these places have been dominated by the left for many, many years now. Corporate America, increasingly because of the wokeness virus, is also now dominated with leftists. Just look at Disney with the walkouts of employees and Disney's CEO, new CEO, coming out to say that they should have taken a stronger stance against the don't say gay bill, which is actually the parental rights bill, and nowhere does it say you can't say gay, but wokeness is wokeness. It's not rooted in truth, it's rooted in lies. Wokeness has also overtaken our law schools, including the best ones. It might be actually worst of all at the so-called best ones, the most elite by reputation. Check out this headline from the Daily Mail. Law schools are in crisis. The truth doesn't matter much. The game is to signal one's virtue. Yale Law School professor who tackled woke mob at free speech event says the future of the rule of law in the U.S. is in crisis. There was a free speech event uh, with some lawyers, uh, some, some minds from the world of law speaking to a classroom full or an auditorium full of Yale Law students. Those students, this is from Barry Weiss's Common Sense column, her substack, more than 100 law students disrupted the event intimidating attendees and attempting to drown out the speakers when the professor moderating the panel, Kate Stith, told the protesters to grow up, they hurled abuse at her and insisted their disturbance was free speech. The fracas caused so much chaos that police were called. I mean, just understand, this is occurring here. This is, that, that's from the actual event. You see these, these spoiled brats. I wonder how many of them actually honestly broke a 165 on the LSAT, because overall, Yale Law School is supposed to be the hardest in the country to get into. I wonder how many even broke a 160 on the LSAT. I'd be very curious about that. You know, there was a time when getting into these places was super difficult for everybody, but now they've made it easier for some people while almost impossible for others. And then they tell us that everybody who goes is just so smart and brilliant. Gee, I don't know about that. Look at this classroom full of idiots shouting down invited speakers who want to talk about things like the right of the accused to counsel. That's the kind of stuff that are top law schools right now. Just so you understand, the top law schools have students who are going to graduate and become prosecutors. They're going to become DOJ employees. They're going to be at and then running eventually the biggest, most influential law firms in the country. And they oppose ideas like, you know, really bad, icky people, you know, maybe Trump supporters, for example, who got caught trespassing on January 6th. They don't deserve any defense. And if you defend them as a lawyer, you're a bad person. This is the world we are turning, to, uh, turning into here, legally speaking, in America. This is what's actually happening. <laughs>